Check this out. Look how amazing this turned out. This thing is gonna do a great job supporting the 75 gallon aquarium that we designed it for. Let's go take a look at how we build it. At this point, I had already made the base and started cutting the side panels. Um, we knew what size we needed. This cabinet was designed to support a 75 gallon aquarium. So it's approximately four foot wide, 18 inches deep and about 36 inches in height. And the next part of the process was to get the back side of the cabinet cut. At this point, I was ready to take the sides that have already been cut and get them ready to attach to the back of the cabinet that I just cut out. And then eventually here we will attach this to the base. As I was putting this together, I was doing it by myself. So I used a few of my squeeze clamps to hold these pieces vertical while I was getting the back ready to sit on top. And as we put them together, um, just made sure that we used some wood glue Once we got the back panel fastened to the sides, it's now time to put it in place on the base. Now we're ready to install the other two vertical panels. As you can see, I'm using a little extra hand helper uh, with my clamp at the bottom. This just helps hold it vertical while I glue it and put a few nails in it. With the other two vertical panels in place, it's time to add some reinforcements. I just ripped down some pieces of one by material and basically fit them in all the way across the back. I did add a little bit of glue and a few nails in it. These will help sturdy up the back side and it'll also give something to fasten the top to when we get to that point. Now we're ready to install the front face of this cabinet. Basically here, I've already cut the two vertical ends and the one horizontal piece to size. Let's go install this front face. Once I got the front face installed, I noticed that one of the panels in the center, the vertical panels, just stuck up a little bit, and I didn't want the top to be rocking on that. It was very close, but it was enough that uh, I could take a little bit off of that just to make sure that top sits nice and firm and uh, doesn't rock.
And as you can see, we had a little bit of technical difficulty, just a piece of sandpaper on the belt sander. Um, it split, so we got rid of that, got a new piece on, finished the job up. Next, we're gonna finish installing the two vertical pieces on the front of the cabinet. After I ripped these down on the table saw to size, I ran them through my planer just to make sure I have a nice clean edge. A little bit of sanding to take those edges off, make sure that paint sticks nicely to it. Now it's time to rip down some pieces and fasten this thing down to the base, make sure it's all solid and square. As you can see here with some of the pieces that I ripped down, I put them across the back side and on the ends on the inside where you really won't see them behind the end panel doors. The other thing, this thing's gonna be painted all white so those will blend in nicely. Now it's time to put together the top. For the top, we're basically just using two by four lumber. Try to pick out a little better lumber here that doesn't have as many knots or imperfections in it. Sometimes it's hard with two by fours, but we got some pretty good wood here. I've run all these through the planer to make sure they're all the same size. Everything fits together very well. These are being put together with just glue and clamps and I am letting these dry overnight. A lot of people say a couple, two or three hours, you can work with it. I thought it was safer to just let them sit overnight. We put a light stain on this just to give it a little bit of color.
After this top dried overnight, it turned out great. The color is great. Finish is really smooth on it. Now let's go put some polyurethane on this. Time to move on to building the doors. The doors we're building today are a simple rail style and panel door. The rails are the horizontal part, the styles are the vertical part, and of course the panel's in the center. As you can see here, I did a little high level math to determine what size my doors would be. Basically, I just scratched down some numbers and some measurements, found my center points, and just wanted to make sure that I had enough of a reveal. Nothing too high tech. Time to move on to making the rails and the styles. Basically, I used my table saw to cut an eighth inch groove all the way around both the rails and the styles. This will allow the panel to slide right in nicely and make a nice firm door. As you can see, I'm cutting the ends of the rails. This will make a nice little tongue that slides into the groove on the style. These turn out to be a really strong, solid door. This door turned out really great. You can see right now we've put it together and it's just been dry fit. Um, so after we cut those uh, the rails down, and made sure that they were the right sizes, all the pieces came together well. You can see the finished product here. The only thing we need to do now is glue this. So let's, let's take it apart and let's glue it. Now we're back at it with the table saw. Here I'm cutting the center shelf for the unit. Here we are today, we are ready to paint this cabinet. It really turned out nice. You can see we've got a nice top on it. We're going to temporarily take that top off and we're going to spray out the rest of it. You can see right now these are just kind of sitting here. Um, we've got these cabinet doors set up that will go on a uh, sliding uh, barn style track. Uh, both of these doors are set up and ready to paint. Uh, we also have a shelf here in the center that we're going to be uh, taking out. We'll paint those all separately. But uh, let's go ahead and get started on this and we're going to see how it turns out. Well, here we are this morning. We are setting up the paint booth. How about this thing? Uh, this was something that I saw online. Somebody had posted a quick way to make a paint booth. And uh, certainly this is not a professional paint booth with exhaust fans and all that. But this thing is going to do a great job of just making sure that we don't have overspray going everywhere. And it was really easy to set up. We had this canopy already. It's just a 10 by 10 pop-up canopy. Uh, set the canopy up, take some plastic, 
tape it around the inside, let it hang down, make sure your floor is covered, and you've got an instant paint move. Paint sprayer experiment was unfortunately a fail. Um, I set up a nice paint booth here, which really would have done a great job um, of containing any overspray, but unfortunately, um, the HVLP paint spray gun that I purchased just did not work out well. Um, I saw some pretty good reviews on this uh, Harbor Freight, uh, which again, Harbor Freight, right? Um, but still, even at that, I think more of it was the consistency of the cabinet paint that um, I had chosen. And I tried thinning it down with Flow Troll, just like the manufacturer had suggested and recommended, and just couldn't get the consistency right. And so I did some experiments on uh, some boards in the cabinet and it just wasn't flowing well and I didn't think I was going to get a good finish and we spent all this time on this cabinet so the last thing we wanted to do was have a mess of a paint finish on the cabinet. After the minor paint booth failure, this cabinet and doors turned out really nicely. I used a bare cabinet paint on this, lays out really smoothly whether you're using a brush or a roller, this finish just turned out great. We're about ready to finish this project up by installing some barn style door hardware. This is going to go on somewhere about right here. Uh, our doors are going to hang down from each side and slide to the center and then finish by opening back out to the ends. Let's see how this looks. Another successful project. This thing really turned out great. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I can't wait to see the 75 gallon aquarium sitting on this thing. We'll make sure we show you pictures of that sometime in the future. Thanks for watching.